identifying each type of pairs of angles formed by two parallel lines cut by a transversal is a very important skill and it will allow you to correctly set up the algebraic equations equals uh, that will allow us to solve for x and find the angle measurements. So I don't have these in any particular order. Let's go ahead and look at their first diagram. We note that we have these two angles which seem to be across from each other and they do share this vertex. Hopefully you're fine with these being vertical angles. You've seen angles like this before in the past. We know that vertical angles are congruent, and so we're going to set these equal to each other. We have 13x is equal to 130 degrees, and that's because vertical angles are congruent. They're equal to each other. We solve for x by dividing both sides by 13. We get that x equals 10. Now, that's x. If I want to know what this is going to be, I'm going to plug the 10 back in for x. If I do that, I get that this angle right here is 130 degrees. However, we knew that conceptually because vertical angles are congruent. So we know that this is going to be 130 degrees regardless. For this one, we observe this angle is given and this angle is given. Those are corresponding angles. We know that corresponding angles are congruent. For those of you still unfamiliar with the concept of congruent, congruent is a geometric equal. It's a super equal. It means same shape, same measurement, same size. Is everything always equal? No, it depends on what kind of angle relationship there is. But in this case, we know that corresponding angles are equal. Please don't forget to write equals to show that there's equivalency. This becomes a two-step equation, very classic problem from pre-algebra. We subtract 5 from both sides. We get that x equals 6. That is a value of x. However, if we want the value of the actual measurement of the angle, we have to plug the 6 back into x. So we do that here. We get 60 plus 5. This is a 65 degree angle. I would strongly suggest that you take the same six and put it in here and see what you get. You should get 65 degrees as well because both of these angles are the same measurement. They're both congruent, they're corresponding angles. For this one, we know that we are on the exterior sides. We're on the outsides of the parallel lines. So what we have here is there are different sides of the transversal. And these are alternate exterior angles. And we know from the last lecture video, if you look at your little table, alternate exterior angles are congruent, which means they're equal to each other. So I can set them once again, equal to each other. We're going to solve for X. that is the value of x. And if I were to plug this 4 back into here, 20 times 4 is 80 degrees, which further proves the idea that alternate exterior angles are congruent in this case, because if this is 80 degrees, this has to be 80 degrees. For this problem, note that we're in the interior. We're between the two parallel lines. However, we're on opposite sides of the street. That means these are alternate interior angles. What do we know about alternate interior angles? Well, there you go. So if we set them equal to each other, we have 60 degrees is equal to that expression. We add 5 to both sides and then divide by 13. And we get x equals 5. Now, please be aware when you do problems on assignments or quizzes, if I ask for x, then I want x, and that's it. However, if I'm looking for the angle, then you need to go ahead and possibly put this back into here to see what you get. Now, any suspicions to what you should get? Well, we got 60 degrees because alternate interior angles are congruent. So no big surprise there. If this is 60 degrees, then this is 60 degrees. 
So this looks ex this is exterior. However, it doesn't alternate, and this is not corresponding. So you, you know again, you have to be very good at identifying what kind of a relationship you have. You will note, however, that they do seem to share a line, and they are adjacent. So we have a linear pair. Now, before you get crazy, linear pairs are not congruent. Linear pairs, according to the linear pair postulate and by definition of linear pairs, they are two angles that are adjacent, that are supplements of each other. And so what we have is these two angles, if you add them up, it's equal to 180 degrees. So this is our setup right here. We can combine like terms on the same side. We go ahead and subtract this from both sides. Divide both sides by 59. And that is a value that we get for X. Now, we'll have to find the, out this, the, out, this out the hard way. So we're going to need to find both angles. And we're going to have to put this 3 in for both of these X's. So this angle right here is 50 degrees. We plug in the same X value 3 into this angle now. We get a 130 degrees. And this makes sense because if this is 130 degrees and this is 50 degrees, if you add them up, you get 180 degrees because it's a linear pair and these are supplements of each other. Now, just for kicks, I challenge you to be able to identify everything else on this diagram. So if this is 130 degrees, then this angle should be 130 degrees because of vertical angles. This angle should be 50 degrees because of vertical angles. If this is 50 degrees up here, then we could use corresponding angles to show that this is also 50 degrees. And that also corresponds with this angle right here, which is 130 degrees. That'll correspond to this one right here, which is 130 degrees. Those are corresponding angles. And then we can keep going, right? And you can use all kinds of different ideas to prove the rest of this. You could discuss, for example, uh, that alternate interior angles are congruent. Or alternate exterior angles are congruent. Of course, you can use vertical angles are congruent. The idea here is that you're so comfortable with identifying angle pair relationships that the math actually becomes very simple at the end, right? We're dealing with pre-algebra skills, and then once you unlock one or two angles, you've unlocked everything else if you know the concepts and you know where angles are located. Well, for this last one, there's no surprise. There's only one type of angle relationship left, but let's look at it. We're in the interior again, but this time the two angles live on the same side of the block, the same side of the neighborhood. And these types of angle relationships, in this case, it's a consecutive interior angles. These are not equal or congruent. And if that's true, then if I add these two up, it's equal to 180 degrees. We can combine like terms, subtract this from both sides, and then divide both sides by 12 to get that x equals 8. That is the value of x. Now I know this angle is already 69 degrees. This is not 69 degrees. Observe that this is an acute angle, but this is an obtuse angle. We plug in an 8 for x, and we follow up order of operations to simplify. 12 times 8 is 96, and then if I add those up, I get 111 degrees. So this angle right here is 111 degrees. If you were to add this 69 plus this 111, you should get 180 degrees because consecutive interior angles are supplementary. 
For your summary, I want you to get really good at identifying these angle pair relationships. So draw two parallel lines, cut them with a the transversal, number the eight angles, one through eight, identify at least one pair of each of the following. So identify a pair of corresponding angles. Identify means just tell me like angle one is angle whatever. Don't have to find me any math or algebra, just identify a pair. Um, alternate interior angles, alternate exterior angles, and consecutive interior angles. Typo there. And again, you're not telling me if they're congruent or equal to 180 or anything like that. Just identify a pair. So if I have, for example, here, right? If, if this is my example that I drew, I'm going to say angle one and angle two are corresponding. For example, do that for corresponding angles, alternate, alternate exterior, alternate interior, alternate exterior, and consecutive interior angles. The same one drawing. 